News, which is about nonlinear marketing. Uh, we talked about linear marketing. We've talked about nonlinear marketing just on a surface level. But here's the big news. The way people buy products is different from what they taught you. Now, we, all the stuff I just taught you about consumer behavior still exists. All that's great. But the way people actually buy products and go through the thought process and the emotional connection with a brand is very different from what they taught you in school. Now, traditionally, what we have is a sales funnel. People go into the top of the sales funnel and they come down and they convert down at the bottom. So they visit your website at the top and down at the bottom they buy your product. That's what we're taught in colleges and universities, but the truth is it's slightly different from that. So in that process that you're taught, is you start out with awareness of a need. Oh, I think my car is now seven years old, it's time for me to get a new one. Then you get into the knowledge basis. Oh, let me look at different options. There's Mercedes-Benz, there's Audi, there's uh, 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 BMW. Then you start getting into the liking phase. Well, I think I'm leaning more towards a BMW, but I'm not positive. And then you get into the preference phase. I now have done my homework, I really know that I want to buy a BMW, I'm good on that. Then you get into the conviction. I'm going to go down to the dealership, I'm going to talk to them, I'm going to start negotiating. You ultimately do a purchase, and then of course, all of that turns into a sale for BMW. Now what would happen in that process when we teach it, that linear process, is that we go in and we say, hey, you are flipping through the newspaper and you see an ad and you go, yeah, it's about time for me to buy a new car. Then you go visit the websites of the different cars. Then you go in and you start, you do, might do a webinar if you're selling a, a B2B product as an example. Now if you're selling a B2B product, you might also then go and download a white paper and say, all right, now I'm learning about this software that I'm about to buy and I'm gonna download the white paper. You then sign up for the e-newsletter and ultimately make the purchase and they do customer relationship management with you. All of that is what we've taught in school. Now here's the problem with that. Traditional models don't reflect how the real world works, especially today. The customer journey is not linear. That's the problem. We said that the customer journey starts at the top of the sales funnel and moves all the way down to the bottom of the sales funnel. When the reality is, Sometimes, and I know there are people in here right now who've done this, sometimes we start at the middle of the sales funnel and then we go up a notch and then we go down and we don't even start at the top. Other times we might start near the bottom of the sales funnel and then skip up to the top and then jump down a little bit to the middle and then do the rest of it. So the process of buying things is very different from the linear process that they taught us. It's not linear at all. Everybody in this room has bought a product on impulse. You've been at the checkout counter, you're going in, you're scanning your, your, your checkout items, uh, and then you see something right there and you say, I'm gonna go ahead and grab that, and you go ahead and grab it. That's an impulse buy. You started at the bottom of the funnel. You didn't go through all these things. You basically bought something at the bottom. So the reality is, is that the purchase process is actually nonlinear in nature. It's more a word we have in, in, in uh, English, amorphous. It means without form. It's kind of nonlinear in nature. So let's take that. It gets even worse, though, because if we understand that the process of buying a product is not linear, there's another dynamic that's going on that makes it even worse. Now this is a conversation I had last night with some of the folks at the cocktail reception and we talked about media consumption habits in Slovenia. And I said, tell me about TV, tell me about radio, tell me about the internet. And the same thing is going on in Slovenia that's going on in the United States, which is that people are no longer allowing brands to interrupt their lives in order to sell them something. What do I mean by that? The days of a brand going in and interrupting a TV show to say, we know you're enjoying this drama very much, but we want to interrupt you right now to sell you a product that you're going to absolutely love and it's on sale right now, down around the corner, now back to the murder mystery that you were watching. You know, it's a very interruptive experience. It's not good. 
So what's going on is people are starting to resist that, and they're going in. Here's time spent with traditional media is declining in the United States over the course of time. In fact, if you're a younger person, a millennial, you're hardly doing any traditional media anymore. Now, what happens to brands that are sitting there going, hey, we've got everybody under 30 years old who is no longer doing traditional media. How do I reach them? How do I get in touch with them? What am I gonna do in order to get them to buy my stuff? This is a big deal. We've gotta figure out how to change it. The good news is that something's come along called nonlinear marketing, and some of the biggest brands in the world are practicing it now. 20th century techniques aren't working as well as they used to. As a result, brands are changing the way they connect with consumers. This is the traditional sales funnel. We talk about people dropping in the top. If nonlinear marketing is about weaving the fabric, uh, the brand, weaving the brand into the fabric of the consumer's life, that fabric is done through the sales, through the sales funnel. But we're going to turn the sales funnel on its side and start looking over the top of it, and we're going to look down the sales funnel. And instead of thinking of the sales funnel as a funnel, I want you to think of it as a web. In other words, there's a invisible threads that are going along and consumers are flying right into those invisible threads. They don't even know that they're flying into it because they can't see it because it's not interrupting your TV watching experience to do something. What it is, is that the brand is becoming involved in your life and becoming part of your life. And as a result, you're experiencing the brand in a much different way. Instead of being interrupted, you're actually participating with the brand. And it makes the experience much better and much longer lasting because the brand is now part of your life.